friends and family, but uh, this morning we're also thinking about some of the men and women who won't be home this Christmas, and there are plenty of them. Cordelia Kretschmar is with some of them now in Basra. A very good morning to you, Cordelia. Good morning, Andrew, and a very beautiful sunny morning it is here in Basra. This is it, Christmas in the sun underneath the palm trees and if you just look closely behind me that is Saddam Hussein's former presidential palace but you might uh, not be surprised to hear some people pay thousands to spend Christmas in temperatures like these well these boys and girls they're getting paid to do it and if you just spin the camera around that way that is why that's really what the rest of Iraq looks like and so uh, for the rest of this Christmas yes Christmas in the Sun but it's also Christmas with guns and Christmas with a hell of a lot of hard work to do. Unofficially, it's known as Operation Cancel Christmas. Saddam Hussein's capture is still being celebrated in Basra. No, Saddam. But it's no excuse for a holiday. As Britain winds down for Christmas, British troops in Iraq are stepping up their operations. Over the weekend, they launched a wave of raids on suspected Saddam loyalists, a show of force to combat the threat of revenge attacks over Christmas. Obviously, we're conducting a number of operations to guarantee our safety because it's a special time and it's not a time that we want anyone to be particularly worried about us. But even in Iraq, you can't keep the Christmas spirit down. Daily briefings have never been, well, so illuminating. Mini Santa's grottos are springing up all over the desert. And everywhere, reminders that peace on earth comes at a price. But here, it doesn't seem like Christmas at all. It's just, the weather's got a lot to do with it. Christmas, just another day. I'm going to have a good day on Christmas Day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but only two cans of beer. The best thing they can expect is a different sort of gunfire. And that gunfire is where we toast them with a little amount of, a small amount of alcohol first thing in the morning when we wake them up. So Christmas lunch for 10,000 British troops in Iraq will be served in a cookhouse like this, but with just one of these turkeys between about 30 people, there won't be much left over for Boxing Day. So are these Scrooge rations, will some soldiers say so? These Christmas hampers and this stash of presents were donated by businesses, not by the military. So on the ground then, business as usual. But the night we flew into Iraq, the control tower lit up for Christmas. OK, so enough from me. Let's hear from some of these people who aren't going to be seeing their families this Christmas. They won't be seeing their families, in fact, for another couple of months. Uh, what's your Christmas message now? Merry Christmas, Mum, Dad, Sarah, Stephen, and a big hello to Chris and Olivia. OK, we've got another one next to you. Oh, Cobble Down Robbie, 34 Squadron RF Regiment. Just to my wife, Bev, love ya. And to my little angel, Alicia. Merry Christmas, darlings. Oh, he loves her. Up here now. Wheelie Barrow, Royal Navy. Hello to all the family and my darling wife. And I can't wait to go on our honeymoon when we get back. And uh, Santa down here. To my girlfriend, Gillian, have a very good Christmas. Have lots of drinks for me. I love you. We've got lots more over here as well. Merry Christmas to my wife, Pam, and the rest of the family. Love you all. Hope to see you soon. OK. I just want to say Merry Christmas to my parents and my brothers and sisters and particularly my big sister Annie who's watching. And one last one if you promise to keep that gun pointing away from me. I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas to my wife Donna and my two kids Callum and Spencer. Merry Christmas. Can't right. wait to come home. OK, so the message here from the Royal Navy, these two over here and uh, the Air Force is... Are you ready? Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Oh, that's great, Cordelia, fantastic. thank you. Do they have a very open communication with home? Is it easy to talk to home, Cordelia? Uh, well, it's easier than it was during the war itself. They're allowed to use uh, mobile phones now a lot of the time, so there's a lot of texting, and in fact, they were given free text messages by one of the mobile phone companies, but it is very expensive to use mobiles out here, so uh, any chance they get to uh, give a little bit more contact, they're very grateful for it. I, I and can your, and your voice is OK for communication a little bit later on? bit of the old uh, Basra throat here. I think it's the desert dust doing me in, but uh, <coughs> I can just about keep going as long as you get me home for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That'll be taken care of. Thanks very and much, We'll give Cordelia. them all our best. Wish them yeah. Merry Christmas and say thanks from us, won't you, Cordelia? Take care. I will do. Got Liz and Tim later on, haven't we? We have. Liz and Tim. Remember the wedding in, uh, in August? Oh, yeah, we're talking about Liz and Tim. Yes, we're talking I about Liz and Tim. I thought you'd maybe said something that you weren't supposed to. <laughs> well, if but I we have, move on. Oh, well. We move on, we move on. You'll find out what I mean a bit later. Competition time now, and Keith Chokes.